Hello, everybody. My name is Kitty, and I'll be your host for today's Etcher Live demo. We are here with the wonderful Anna Kodavec, who's going to be talking to you today about her new course, which is about um, drawing portraits. It's a foundational course. Um, so today she's going to be showing you how to draw a, an eye. Um, the course is six weeks starting on Saturday, August 19th. And um, if you have any questions as we're going through today's class, please put the questions in the chat in all capital letters so that I can see it better. If those questions are relevant to what Anna's doing at the time, I will ask then. If not, I'm gonna hold off some of those questions until the end when we do our question and answer session. And also please do stick around to the end because we are gonna be doing a drawing for one of our watercolor sets. So uh, yeah, without further ado, I'm going to hand this over to Anna who will be telling us more about what we're doing today. Anna, it's all you. Thank you, Kitty. Hi, welcome everyone. Great that you're all here. Um, so today, like Kitty already mentioned, we're going to um, draw and paint the eye, uh, one of the most expressive features of the face and of course, during the course, we will also dive deep into drawing, painting the eye, because really, um, you know, the expression, the eyes are the, 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 like the image of the soul. So, so there's a lot to it, actually, to the eye. And really, if we can capture the eye convincingly and um, realistically, it really makes a, a big change in our work in our portrait it really helps to um, boost the whole face so to speak so that's why i chose to uh, focus on the eyes today and also because maybe the eyes are also one of the most challenging features to capture right and um, so what we will be doing today is um, i'm going to show you how we can draw the eye and i'll be using a uh, already half drawn um, portrait fa face and I'll, there'll be already some lines visible but one eye will be already visible and I will going to add the, the other eye to it but of course um, in a way that it fits correctly with all the other features and with the whole image and the whole face and first we'll be working with pencil and uh, eraser and then to uh, that's really to get a better understanding of the position of the eye the, the shape and the proportions and then uh, once we've done that we're gonna um, get our watercolor out and um, add some depth and um, dimension to the whole the eye and the rest of the face and um, so that we can really have a more natural looking portrait or focusing on the eyes. And during the course, we'll be working with just one watercolor color. Uh, that's really to um, keep it a little simple because of course we will focus on uh, a lot of different topics and each class is con constructed in a way that we will focus on uh, individual features and um, and how they relate to other features and how how can we sort of um, build them up in the portrait so to speak and to and so do our my aim is really to uh, learn more about the structure of the face because I, I believe that can be really helpful for us to uh, capture someone's likeness and but also in general to capture a face in a natural, realistic way to really understand, okay, how are these features actually relating to each other? How does one eye relate to the other eye if I really look at it? And so therefore, um, because that is our main uh, focus during, during the whole course and at the end we will paint a whole portrait from scratch. Um, I decided to stick with just one color during the whole course. And so that's what I'm also going to do today. So I'll be using one watercolor color. 
And if you want to draw and paint along with me, that's great. I didn't uh, send out a reference photo because I think it's um, helpful just to see how far we can get. Uh, of course, I do have a reference photo, but just to see how far do we actually get to just start drawing the eye and adding paint. What do we actually get? How far do we get with that? Without focusing too much on, oh, the image, what does it look like? And um, so that we can really start to get more feeling of, oh, okay, so this is how a face is really structured. I hope I'm making sense. Mm -hmm. um, so um, let me think if there's anything else to add before we start. Um, yeah, so I just want to say, so if you want to draw along, that's great. But if you feel like, oh, I, I just really rather just watch what, what is, what's this all about, then that's really fine too. And, um, and during, during the process, I will talk a little more about the, the course and what we will do and um, from what kind of angles we will approach the portrait and everything. So, and if you have any questions, of course, you can always ask them. And I guess that's it for now. So I think we can shift to the, uh, the studio screen where we can actually see the workplace. Okay, here we go. And again, everybody, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat in all capital letters so that I can see them better. Okay, Anna, it's, we're ready to go. Thank you. So, so this is um, the portrait that we're going to work on today. I just, I've made already a version of it, the whole face, but today we're just going to look Focus on the eyes. I like I mentioned before. I do have a reference photo just for for you to see. Like, what do I mean with when we are going to draw and paint the eyes? So this is the idea. This is kind of what we want to get in our drawing and painting today. And so of course, it's it's like rather big also. So the eyes are relatively big, uh, so that we can really focus on them. And we have a bit of the nose and the hair on the sides, but really we will um, focus mainly on the eyes. And how do we do that? How do you draw an eye when you look at a picture and you see two eyes? How do you capture them? But of course, a lot of people, me included, um, we are used to uh, work with um, transferring images straight from the photo, like. For, for instance, using carbon paper, so we can sort of copy the drawing straight from a reference photo, which is great. It can be really helpful. The only pitfall with that is that um, because we directly um, uh, rely on what is given by the photo, the proportions, the, the, the size and everything. We think, okay, well, we have all that covered. So I, all I need to do is just, you know, paint the image. But in my experience, um, um, we still can get lost into details and into, um, into getting the features right, even though we have our reference photo already printed on our paper uh, or transferred on our paper. And I believe that a very more fundamental understanding of shape and proportion can be really, really, really helpful. Even if we directly rely on a photo, on a reference photo, uh, knowing how the facial features are actually positioned and how they relate to each other is hugely helpful to um, successfully create a portrait, in my opinion. So that's also one of the main uh, objects or the main focuses on in during the course. And um, so let's see what we can do today. 
shape and proportion. So I have this already this drawing that I already started, as you can see. Um, the, there's just a very simple outline of the size of the face here, it's a bit of the ear still, and there's a beginning of the right eye, uh, as you can see in the reference photo. So this is a, the face is seen from, let's say, a three-quarter view, so it's not front view. And um, that can be pretty tricky, right? Because in front view, everything is symmetrical. We can see, okay, the nose is in the middle and you have two eyes on the side. But as soon as our angle shifts, it's like, oh, how do they actually, you know, how wide are the eyes actually away apart from each other? And uh, so that's another thing we will look at during the course. And, um, and today, too, we're going to look a little bit into that, too. And so I mentioned it before, shapes and proportion. And I'm sure you, most of you are familiar when I talk about shape and proportion. If not, then I'll just give you a very short uh, description. Like the shape describes the outline of the figure. And it tells us how a, sh a form, like the eye, for instance, but also the face as a whole, how it's curved and what are their, what the characteristics of that figure is. Is the face long? Is it short? Is it chubby or thin? Is it bony? All these kinds of things. Those are all defined by shape. And if we break a face down into shapes, we can actually see that there are actually geometrical um, shapes that we can define there. For instance, if I look at the tip of the nose, as you can see me doing here right now, so here's the nose. And the tip of the nose, we could add a bit like a circle, very simple, but, and then that makes it a lot easier to sort of define the rounding of the nose around that. So there are all these kind of um, tools that we can use to define the shapes relating to the facial features. And um, getting the shapes right, like really looking to them, okay, so what are their curves, is crucial to get the resemblance Right, so shapes are fundamental for getting, for when we want to draw and paint a uh, realistic looking portrait. And the shapes are very much also related to proportion and proportion is the relationship between the heights and the widths of the shapes. And so this eye on the right will have a different proportion than the eye that we're going to draw here. And that's what we're going to work on now. So getting the proportions right is also crucial to really start um, building up a portrait. Because of course, if we want to uh, paint a portrait, if we want to paint someone that, for instance, a friend, a portrait of a friend or a family member, all we want to do is that it will look like them, right? We really want to have the resemblance right. But the, the, the danger in that is that we will focus a lot on the details and on the specific shapes. Oh, the, the eyebrows should be a little like this or a little like that. And that can be um, very distracting. This actually, it sounds a bit like a contradiction, but um, a good likeness actually depends more on how the overall construction of the face is established rather than all the tiny details that we want to get right all the time. So that's what we're going to look into today. So as you can see here, um, I have a vertical line, straight line going down here. And this is sort of to describe the center of the face like the vertical center line. Of course, 
This line is not in the center of the paper. There's, there's a lot more space to the left and to the right. But if we look at the reference again, the center of the woman's face is actually here because it's like the center runs right between the eyes. So that's a very simple starting point to uh, establish this line. And if you want to draw along, then I would um, invite you to start with that, draw a vertical line to the right of your paper. And then like a little more than an inch to the right, we draw another vertical line to indicate the outer edge of the right eye. And of course, I have already um, drawn the right eye here. I'm going to add a bit of a pupil here too. Uh, but now we're going to add the left eye. And so the left eye is for us a little more, um, how can you say, like it's actually a little closer to us than the right eye. I'll take, I'll come back with my reference photo. Since the girl's face is a little turned away from us, the right eye is a little tiny bit further away from us, turned away than the left eye. So that means logically that the left eye should be a little bigger than the right eye. And that touches on the rules of perspective. I won't go too deep into that because we will cover that in the course also. But just take it from me, the left eye should be a little bigger. So I'm going to just draw a another vertical line to um, uh, indicate the inner corner of the left eye. And now you can already see there are some widths here. So we have the width of the right eye and then the space between the two eyes is more or less the same as the space of one of the right eye. And so the left eye should be a little bigger. Now I'm gonna gamble a little bit. So I'm just going to um, guess more or less looking at the whole of my of my already established sketch, how much bigger that eye should be. And I, I'm just guessing it should be around this, much wider. So I'm going to add a vertical line here. So it's a tiny bit, I hope you can all see that, it's a tiny bit wider than here. And now looking at the eye itself, if you can see it already a little bit here. So if we look really into the shape of the eye, I'm trying to emphasize it here a little bit, it kind of looks a little bit like a leaf shape, like this, right? Well, sort of a leaf, like <laughs> that would be like a leaf. So this is an, a way to break down shapes. We look at the eye and then we look at, okay, what does the shape really look like? So this is really fundamental, a fundamental understanding of facial features. So for the right, excuse me, for the left eye, we can also see that it's actually a bit of a leaf shape. It starts on the right and then fans out here to the left and more or less like this. Just a very basic shape. And here is the tear duct and then we can add the eyelid on top and we're at the, um, the iris right there. If you are drawing along and have think like whoa this is going really fast I understand 
just try to it doesn't matter if it doesn't work out right, straight from the start. We all we're all practicing. I have practiced many many times and many years to draw a portrait correctly. Maybe pupil should be a little bigger. Arms. Just just see how far you can get with it. Any any kind of attempt to get the shape right is a great attempt. Okay. All right. And we can add the eyebrow. It should be more or less in line with the other eyebrow. Very basic. Uh, shape. It's simplifying the shapes right there. I'll add the pupil here and the eyelashes. With the eyelashes I would say like of course they have a bit of a roundness to them but I would say just uh, draw them kind of randomly that's very exact, uh, exactly the same curves next to each other, but kind of random uh, round curves to indicate where they are. And of course here on the lower side of the eye there are some lashes as well. All right, so very simple representation of the left eye, but this is just a start. Okay. Now, now that we have established this, we can um, start. Oops, we can start looking at the the, the paint, the watercolor, because of course now the the drawing is rather flat. And we want to bring it more to life, you know, like give it more depth. And depth is really created uh, with using different values, different color tones. We have very, you can use very light tones, you can use middle tones and very dark tones. And um, using those in a right order with a, uh, uh, a, a, in a, with a good balance, not too many dark and not too many light values, you can build up depth. And that's what we're going to do now, very simply. So I have a round brush here, number 12, with a pointy tip. And I made this um, color here. And this is um, ivory black and I added a bit of burnt sienna so you get a bit of a sepia like very warm sepia kind of color which I, I really like I thought that would be nice for today and I'm just very simply going to um, add some color first I'll mark the edge of the face so that we can see okay here is the hair and here is the um the face going to do that in a very very general light not too dark wash just to very simply indicate okay the hair is there and uh doesn't have to look like hair yet it doesn't look like hair yet and on the left as well just very simple strokes to indicate um, where the hair starts and because we have the ear here and there's going to be a little bit of hair down below the ear as well it still looks all very simple we're still working on the fundaments fundamental first steps of building up the portrait. Now the eyes as you might know 
are a little um, retreated in the face, so to speak. So they're kind of like the nose is clearly sticking out and the cheeks as well. Most of like you can see the round curve of the cheeks here. So these are all shapes that are sticking out the eyebrow as well. So the, the eyes are a little more um, retreated, which means that there's a lot of shadow going on. So of course the the shapes in the face or the forms in the face that kind of stick out catch they usually catch more light and the parts of the face that are more uh, retreated so to speak um, they tend to um, catch more shadow or catch less light and be more in the shadow so that's another thing we can capture with our watercolor washes. I start with a bit of a lighter wash. I'm just going to uh, add some light wash right here in sort of the corner of the eye. Very, it's always, there's always almost always sort of a shadow around here depending also of the lighting of course but and since we have the hair here the hair also creates shadow so we can add a very light strip of shadow around the edge of the face this is a little too much Okay, still all very simple, nothing fancy. And then let's add a bit of a shadow here on the nose. So we, the light is coming from the right, touching on the bridge of the nose, creating shadows to the sides of the nose. I'm going to capture that. Very general. Okay. And of course, also the shadows, they're kind of shapes in themselves as well. Like they're, this is kind of like a trapezium shape, as it were. So we can break down everything into shapes, which makes it easier for us to define the features and define what the face looks like and um, where the curves are, where the light falls and where the shades are. It's very helpful to understand and really see and observe the shapes in the right way. So this is still a very light wash, just to indicate the first, um, first layer of shadow, so to speak. Anna, yes, yes. say I interrupt you for a moment. Um, what were the two colors that you mixed again for the for your color? Uh, for this, for this, I mixed I, um, uh, ivory black, a little bit of ivory black with burnt shenna. Great, thank you. Okay. All right. Um, so this is the first layer, it needs to dry. So I'm gonna use my blow dryer. I'm not sure if, if the mic will be turned off automatically. It should mute it. Okay.
Okay. So I'm going to, we're going to focus more on the eyes now. I did an overall wash for the whole face because of course that that's one other thing that I find important, which will also, we will also be working on during the course that um, when you work on one feature, like we're working on the eyes today, um, it's really helpful to um, include the other features as well in some way. Of course, it's wonderful to just draw or paint one eye, it's great. But if you really want to uh, capture a whole face in its totality, it's helpful to work on the different features kind of simultaneously so that we build it up um, step by step and not it's one method to just only work on the eyes and have the eyes totally finished looking wonderful beautiful and then the next step would be working on the nose that's a, a great method too the the downside of that act i find is that if we have one feature working really great and we go to the next feature and it doesn't work out then will feel uh, it, it's going to be a disappointment. It's going to be a struggle because we feel like, yeah, but the eyes were really great, but the nose is not working out. So what should I do now? And if you build up the features sort of simultaneously, you, you kind of avoid that because you will see how they relate to each other during the process. So that's why I um, added a bit of well this is of course simple because we have a time limit limit today but just i added a overall wash to include the whole face already but we're gonna focus now a little more on the eyes i'm gonna uh especially on the shades so we have the eyelid here and the eyelid in its turn creates a bit of a shadow very subtle shadow on the eyeball I'm going to add that. Let's see. Um, what's the word? Establish that here a little bit. Um, of course, the iris itself is pretty dark, usually too. So I'm going to add that too already a little bit. All right. And then the right eye. The right eye is more in the shade than the left eye, so it's going to be a little darker. So I think I'll do an overall wash like that to really make it look more that it's really um, away further away from the light than the left eye so to speak take this out so okay And then, um, by the way, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention the smaller brush I'm using is a number five, a round brush with a tip, but a number four or even maybe a number three would work also. It's also depends on your own preference. Some people like to use smaller brushes, others more uh, larger brushes. Going to add some detail now. Really define the edge of the eyelid. Right there. And the inside of the tear there. A little bit. So you can start to see that the face is coming 
to life a little bit already. And if I would have the time, I could, or we, or if you're work, if you're working on something right now, also we could work it out to a fully detailed portrait if we want. But this this is the basic. This is our starting point, and having our ba basic structure. Um, correct established correctly is going to help us to uh, further develop the face further add more expression more individual expression and of course likeness okay That bit here in the mouse as well. All right. Use my blow dryer for a second. continue building up the value. So this is a middle value. These are clearly darker values. Anna? Yes? Um, I wanted to ask you, how, how closely are you following the reference photo? Or are you adding things where you think they should go? Um, yeah, I do. Well, the thing I do really usually follow um, is the lighting. Okay. So if I take the reference photo here again, because the lighting is light is uh, can be very um, different. Like as soon as you as the light sh is shifted a little bit then mm. the whole face will look different because the light will fall, hit on different spots in the face. So that's something that is not easy to capture um, by heart. So, to yeah. speak. so that's, but uh, the other things like uh, the shape of the nose or even the shape of the eyes, that's, that I'll leave that a little open usually, mm. unless I really want to capture someone's, likeness yeah great would you mind um on occasion just showing us the reference photo so we can see the light that you're working on at the moment sure you mean that i, I keep it next to the painting all the time if it's possible that would be great if yeah. not you could just show it to us once in a while yeah yeah wait let me see i, I can move out the watercolor so you won't see me mixing the color but since it's one color it's not that important i think Yep, uh, that'd be great. Perfect. Thank you so uh, much. Yeah. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. It's a good idea, actually. All right. So I hope you can all see this well. So yeah, good point, Kitty. Um, the lighting is um, something that is very hard to uh, capture just from our imagination, since the light just can be very fickle and change all the time. So then a reference is very helpful. It seems like it would be it would be complicated too with everybody's features being different shapes. Exactly. And of course, the, another thing is of course, um, like we paint from a reference photo, which is actually a flat image. And of course, mm. our own drawing painting is also flat. But we, we really want, we want to <laughs> have a three-dimensional representation of someone. And, uh, and that's what lighting does. Lighting brings the, um, the depth in our painting. Um, so yeah, it's very important to, uh, 
to to always keep that in mind when you use a reference photo or, or whatever painting you do. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So I'm just going to um, build up further on the values, adding, like you can see here, there's pretty dark shape right in the corner of the eye. So we'll capture that as well, using a slightly darker tone. Right there. Okay, and on the right side as well. All right. And you can also really see how dark the inside edge, the inner corner of the eye is there. It really indicates that sort of an indent there. Making the whole left side of the nose a little darker as well. Okay, and then I'm getting my smaller brush to add darker um, tones in the details. For instance, the eyelashes, of course, the eyelashes are pretty dark always, no matter how much light you put on them. Lashes are almost always dark, uh, except for very light haired people. So it's really trying to, really observing the shapes. And uh, there is the eye, but what we're looking at now is really more the shapes around them, the shapes of um, the shadows that surrounds the eye. Okay. And the eye itself. Of course, the irises are pretty dark as well. And that really makes the eyes pop out at the darkest tone, the darkest color value there. And the, eye, the eyes are really beautiful since it has so many uh, levels of light so to speak. There are so many different tones um, present in the eye. Sorry I was looking for the right word. Right so there is the light 
that shines in the iris, like the, the iris catching the light. And then there's the dark pupil and the dark edge of the iris. It's beautiful. It's really, that makes the eye really fascinating to paint because there's so many layers of color and dark and lightness in them in such a small area. Anna? Yeah. Jamie has an excellent question. Do you ever draw in the outline of where the shadows will go before you paint? Do I ever draw the outline of where the shadows? That's a really good question. Um, I usually don't, but I do know some artists do. So I guess it's a personal preference. I think um, if you're more of a drawer, there, I, 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 I tend to sort of um, divide artists into drawers and painters. Mm. <laughs> Very <laughs> simple <laughs> generalization. But uh, if you tend to be more like a drawer, like you really like the lines, then I would say, yeah, go ahead, try to define the edge of a shadow with, with an outline. If you feel that you're more, a, a painter, you really like to use your brushes and you really like to cover uh, big areas with paint, then I would say you might not need it. You, you can do without. So it's, yeah, it's a good question. Thank you. So in, actually in my, um, in the course we'll be doing, we won't um, draw the outlines of the shape um because this the course is really structured that we begin begin with a drawing like we did today or we, we are doing today and then from there on we will build up with the watercolor washes and i think um to really learn that to, the shift from drawing with lines to um covering bigger areas with washes um it's more helpful to not define the shapes with uh, the drawn outline but you could do that definitely it is uh it is a way to capture the lighting as well yeah okay just going into the details a little bit here and always trying to find, to trying to make sure that I, like, okay, do I really capture, did I really capture the right um, intensity of color, the right intensity of darkness and lightness? I leave this left eye a little lighter than in the rest of it because I really like the way it stands out, the contrast between the dark shade to the left and the, the ring of the iris to the lighter part of the eye. Of course, then I, have to, I will have to sort of repeat that with the left eye as well. But since the, um, excuse me, I get confused with left and right all the time. Um, the right eye should be a little lighter as well. So just lifting the paint here a little bit with a dry brush so you get a similar effect still the right eye is a little darker than the left eye since it's more in the, sh in the shade i'm gonna add a little more shade here actually so. okay I don't know how we are with time. I haven't. They're just it. fine, Anna. Okay, okay, great. Thanks. And so now that we have sort of established very simply the basic, um, the basic shapes and the basic shadows, shadow shapes of the eyes and the rest of the face now it would be time to really dive more deep into the detail and into the specifics of uh, the person that we want to paint so we could really pay more attention like okay well 
her eyelid is a little more curved, for instance, you know, or um, the hair has a lot more curls. I want to add more curls, all these things. So that will be the next step. Like you, we're going to um, really um, define the particular shapes more in detail. We won't have time for that today, so we won't be doing that. But of course, uh, in the course, during the course, the last class, it's a six week class and the last class in week six, we will paint a whole portrait from scratch. And we will be, hopefully, uh, that's our aim, <laughs> um, um, able to dive more deep into those details. And of course, also with the individual features in every class, so the, uh, the course is built up in a way that we uh, focus on different features, starting with the eyes and then the nose and the mouth and the ear and the hair. And with those individual uh, fe features, we could also go a little more deeper into the details. Um, but as I said in the beginning, I really believe that it's very important to get the basic right first, because it will also make us feel more confident if we have a basic structure that we can rely on, then it's a lot more fun to continue to really capture someone or to really capture a specific expression, for instance. And, um, and that I hope we will be able to um, learn and develop during our course. And, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, guess I could go on, but I'm not sure how much time we have. So. Well, um, I guess I can um, give everybody the details about the course. Uh, it is six weeks. And it begins on Saturday, August 19th. So it'll be every Saturday um, starting at noon Eastern time. And the classes are recorded. So if you do miss one, you're not going to miss out on anything. And um, let's see, what else can I tell you about it? Uh, Anna will be there to um, answer your questions. Um, we'll have some homework where you'll be able to practice what you learned in the class, which is essential because like we always keep saying, practice makes progress. So you definitely want to practice what you learn in each of the classes so that you're better prepared for, you know, to move on to the next class. Um, and also I'm just throwing this out there. Um, if you want to learn how to draw a body to put these faces on, Pedro is going to be doing a um, figure drawing class. So you can also purchase the bundle of Anna's class and um, Pedro's for uh, a discounted rate, which I'm going to put the link um, to that in the chat as well. Um, I think that's all the details that I have for the course. Anna, can you think of anything else about what they would be learning or... Yeah, um, but I think the homework is uh, homework sounds maybe like, oh no, do we really have <laughs> It's optional. It's optional. I, the homework is optional. optional. <laughs> That's for sure. But I actually think the homework part is going to be fun because yes. I, I think the exercises are, I, I try to design them to also have fun with it because that's another really important part. I really believe, you know, learning something should also be fun. And so, and I think the homework part is, it's, it's really for us to experiment with all the things that we just learned. And we will also be sharing uh, a lot through the Facebook group. And I'll be there too, to answer questions. So that, that will be uh, potentially also a very big part of the course, if you want, but like Kitty said, if you don't have time or you just don't feel like it, it's fine. You don't have to do it. But uh, yeah. Great. 
Um, and yeah, that, that said, there is also a Facebook group where you can um, put your work, your post your, your homework or any kind of practice that you've been doing. And I will answer your questions there. And it's nice to share it with your fellow students as well uh, and help each other in that as well. Um, let's see some comments in the chat here. Ken says, I really love Anna's approach to edges. Sometimes we spend too much time on softening and blending where she lets the medium speak and the result is wonderful. Thank Agreed. You. And let's see, value studies and monochrome are great for getting off to a good start. Very true. That way you're not focusing on color so much and really focusing on the values. And there's another comment saying Pedro and Anna, a dynamic duo. Agreed. <laughs> very much agreed. <laughs> These two courses will play off of each other very, very well. They're both designed to give you a foundation so that whether you decide to go more abstract or you want to do something that's more realistic, this is where you start. These are these are the bones of your work. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. Anything else here? Well, I'm not seeing anything else right now. So if you do have any more questions for Anna, please do put them in the chat. I am going to drop in the link to the course again here. There we go. And from that link, you can also um, get to the bundle of Anna and Pedro's classes as well. There's a comment here saying, uh, people want to start with abstract. They agree that, that the basics are important for abstract too. Absolutely. Because even if you're doing something on purpose that's abstract and the features are a little out of place, still knowing where they're supposed to go yeah. is really important. And the other thing too is um, in this course, you're gonna be learning how to do the features from different head angles as well because that changes everything and that's something that really throws us especially with the eyes okay not seeing any more questions coming up make sure there's nothing i forgot to mention here okay I think we are good. Um, and everybody, um, as I mentioned in the beginning, we are doing a drawing for our, well, not a drawing, but a giveaway for our um, watercolor set. So it's 24 colors in a lovely tin. And um, so here's how we're going to do this. First of all, hands off the keyboards. <laughs> and um, this is what's going to happen. Um, I have on this piece of paper written a number it's on the back. And um, when I type go into the chat, you can type a number from one to 50, only one number. So one number per person. And the first person to get that number, or if nobody gets the actual number, the closest. So the first person to get the closest number um, will win. And you can stop your numbers. Anything after I type stop is not going to count. So anything between go and stop. Okay. So go ahead and get your number in mind. And go. Oh, we've got 15 seconds. And stop. And I don't think this has ever happened before, but I think we have, let's see, just going through here, making sure. The very first person who put the number in actually won. So the number is 47. We didn't get an actual 47. So 48, and that is Chrissy4452. You are the winner of the watercolor set. So congratulations. And I'm going to put the 
email address into the chat where you can email them and email us and let us know so that we can send you your prize. So congratulations. All right, there we go. Um, so um, I think we can wrap up. Again, um, please join uh, Anna in her six-week course. It starts on September, excuse me, August, August, <laughs> Saturday, week. August 19th. Uh, so coming up soon. And yeah, if you also want to learn how to do figure drawing, you can jo join uh, Pedro's course as well, which uh, begins in September. So yeah, Anna, any final thoughts before we go? Um. Well, I've really enjoyed this uh, short live demo. I hope you all did too. And um, yeah, I hope to see you next week or somewhere in the coming weeks to, to join the course. Great. Anna, thank you so much. This was really fun. And everybody, thank you so much for spending this time with us today. And until we see you next time, make more art. Goodbye, everybody.